فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد إن شاء الله تعالى I'm going to share a benefit with you all إن شاء الله تعالى This benefit بإذن الله الكريم The aim and the objective from it is to show you two things. The first thing is how easy and simple it is to attain Jannah and that it's not something complicated and hard. But rather sometimes there are actions and things in which we can attain Jannah. They are simple and they are easy and they are right in front of us. But we don't look that direction. And the second benefit that we take from this hadith is how our messenger alayhi salatu was salam tried his hardest to make sure that he brings to us every single thing there is a salvation in it for us. Our prosperity lies in it. He والسلام, did not shorten in any way, form or shape to bring it to our attention. Ubadat ibn Samit radiyallahu ta'ala anhu narrated and this you can find in Imam Ahmed's Musnad Al-Albani rahimahullah Shaykh Al-Albani rahimahullah he graded this hadith to be Hassan. And I want you to all pay attention because this hadith is um, a blessing and it is something that inshallah ta'ala I hope you all and myself we can take benefit from and that we can also realize that we have a chance. We have a chance and we have opportunities. Ubadat ibn Samit radiallahu ta'ala anhu he said that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said, اِضْمَنُوا لِي سِتًّا مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ Guarantee me, assure me, promise me six things from yourselves, أَضْمَنُوا لَكُمُ الْجَنَّةِ And I will guarantee you and promise you that you will receive paradise, Jannah. Six things that you need to come with. And if you come with these six things, I promise you. Now we want to look at who is saying this. This is the best man who ever walked on the face of this earth. He is a sadiq al He is the truthful one. The one Allah trusted with the revelation and the, and the religion. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He is the one la yantiqu anil hawa. In huwa illa wahyun yuha. He does not speak with his own whims and desires. Rather, every single thing which he says alayhi salatu wa salam is a revelation from Allah. So who's promising you? Rasulullah is promising you. Is this a promise that you can doubt now? No, not at all. <coughs> but the thing you may be worried about is yourself. And inshallah ta'ala, I hope we're not. Six things assure me and promise me that you will come with. And the messenger said, أَضْمَنُ لَكُمُ الْجَنَّةِ And I promise you and I assure you that Allah will give you Jannah. The first one is, and we're going to go through each of those six inshallah ta'ala. The first one of those is Usduku ida haddathukum. The first one is, and the first khasla, the first characteristics that is required from us is to be truthful when we speak. A believer is truthful in everything which he says. The believer doesn't know and doesn't recognize lying, forging, fabricating things. A believer tells the truth. In any circumstances that he's in. He always makes sure that he stands by the truth. Tells the truth. However hard it may be for him, he tells the truth. And that's why the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he told us in a hadith, and Imam Al-Bukhari and Muslim both narrated it on the authority of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. Alaykum bis sidqi upon you is truthfulness. Be truthful. فَإِنَّ الصِّدْقَ يَهْدِي إِلَى الْبِرِّ because truthfulness would guide you to righteousness. وَالْبِرَّ يَهْدِي إِلَى الْجَنَّةِ And righteousness will lead you to paradise. Jannah. وَلَا يَزَالُ الرَّجُلُ يَصْدُقُ And a man and a woman, do, they, they are not consistent upon, upon telling the truth 
and they are truthful in everything which they do and they are like that and they make sure they come with truthfulness until they are written with Allah wa ta'ala as a Siddiq a truthful one you will gain that title with Allah wa ta'ala so the first thing that the Messenger alayhi salatu wasalam told us that we need to come with if we want Jannah and that he's promising us that we're going to receive Jannah is to be truthful in what we say number two the second one is وَأَوْفُوا إِذَا وَعَدْتُمْ وَأَوْفُوا فَفِلْ إِذَا وَعَدْتُمْ if you give a promise to somebody and that's the second characteristics which is الْوَفَاءُ بِالْعَهْدِ وَالْإِلْتِزَامُ بِالْعَهْدِ Sticking by the promise and the covenant you make with a person. And this is what? This is a sima min simatil mu'minin. It's a characteristic from the characteristics of the believer. And it's a sign from the signs of the muttaqin, the righteous people, the pious people. This is the characteristics they're known for. Promises they make, they stick by it. They don't break a promise, they don't break a covenant. They are uniquely distinct with the characteristics of when they give you their word, you are 100% sure that they're going to fulfill their side of the agreement. Whereas the munafiq, the hypocrite, on the other side, gives his word and it has no weight. May Allah wa ta'ala protect us from being like this. We, a lot do we fall into this. that We give people our words and then we come back from it. The third characteristic that the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned this is وَأَدُّوا إِذَا تُمِنْتُمْ The third khasla, the third characteristic is أَدَاءُ amana, Fulfilling that which, you have been prom- that which you have been entrusted with. Fulfilling it by what? By giving it that which you said you will do. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us in a hadith narrated by Ibn Majah on the authority of Fadalah Ibn Ubaidin radiallahu ta'ala anhu Sheikh Al-Albani authenticated in Sunan Ibn Majah Al-Mu'min the believer is Man aminahu al-nasu ala amwalihim wa anfusihim A person, the believer is one who the people, they find safety They, contr- they find safety from their wealth and their nafs. He will not steal from them and rob from them and take from them. He doesn't. And if a nation receive Ada'ul Amana as a characteristic of theirs, truly they lead the world. And they are what they become leaders by that characteristic of theirs. And the khayr and the barakah becomes large in amount. But when this characteristics is taken from them, corruption is what becomes apparent in that land and in those people. The fourth thing that the Prophet ﷺ, he said, وَحْفَظُوا فُرُوجَكُمْ Protect your private parts. حِفْظُ الفرج. Allah wa ta'ala, He told us about the characteristics of the righteous people, Ahlu Taqwa, the Muttaqeen. What did he say? هُمْ لِفُرُوجِهِمْ حَافِظُونَ They are the ones who safeguard their private parts. إِلَّا عَلَىٰ أَزْوَاجِهِمْ أَوْ مَا مَلَكَتْ أَيْمَانُهُمْ فَإِنَّهُمْ غَيْرُ مَلُومِينَ فَمَنْ إِبْتَغَى وَرَاءَ ذَلِكَ فَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْعَادُونَ They safeguard their private parts. They don't fulfill their desires except with that which Allah has permitted for them such as their wives and that which their right hand has possessed. Allah then says, Anybody who tries to fulfill his desires in other than those two which have been mentioned, which is your wife or what your right hand has possessed, they are people who have transgressed, exceeded their limits. So what falls under them, my beloved brothers and sisters, is fulfilling your desires by doing, using your hand. مثلاً, it falls under there, فَمَنْ إِبْتَغَى وَرَاءَ ذَلِكَ فَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْعَادُونَ Or even using anything other than that, it will fall under that ayah. حِفْظُ الْفُرُوجِ Protecting your private part. 
making sure you do not fulfill your desires except that which Allah has permitted subhanahu wa ta'ala. When a nation and a people receive that and they protect their private parts and they make sure they don't fulfill it in haram, what happens is muhafadatul ansab, the people's lineage becomes safe. The people's lineage becomes safe. And the mujtama' becomes pure, taharatul mujtama'. The society and the community are pure. And they're also safe from what? Salamatu min al-amrad. Illnesses are also, inshallah ta'ala, taken away from them. Wal amrad. They won't have HIV, AIDS. It will not spread. And what's sad is that you see a woman who is married who commits zina with another man, مثلاً, or a man who is married who goes to prostitution and fulfills his desires with them. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ لِفُرُوجِهِمْ حَافِظُونَ إِلَّا عَلَىٰ أَزْوَاجِهِمْ أَوْ مَا مَلَكَتْ أَيْمَانُهُمْ فَإِنَّهُمْ غَيْرُ مَلُومِينَ فَمَنِ بَتَغَى وَرَاءَ ذَلِكَ فَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْعَادُونَ The fifth, the fifth thing that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned which is وَغُضُّ أَبْصَارَكُمْ Lower your gaze. Lower your gaze. This characteristics which is lowering your gaze and not looking at that which is haram from you is what protects you from falling into many of the problems that people suffer from. People will come up to you and say to you, I suffer from addiction to pornography, methylen. or I suffer from uh, committing zina. I suffer from, I suffer from. And the reason is because ikhwani wa akhawati, my beloved brothers and sisters, Another looking is Sahmun min Sihami Iblis. It's an arrow from the arrows of Iblis. That's where it all starts. The sin starts very small. It starts with a look. And from there it grows. The Sharia came to block it off. It told you not to look. Qala ta'ala Allah says, Qul lil mu'minina say to the believers, O Muhammad, Yaghuddu min abasarihim. To safeguard and lower their gaze. Pay attention, my beloved brothers and sisters. Lowering the gaze was mentioned before protecting your private parts. And that's the way that the Sharia deals with matters. It doesn't open the door that will lead you to the haram and just make the haram. Brothers, if you look at the man made law today, they will say to you, you can't shout at your kid, you can't beat your kid, you can't. Sp- no. And then when the child does a crime, they put him in prison. And they don't let the parent fulfill his responsibility in making sure that he, um, he disciplines his child. They don't allow, allow it. So they block off every means which the child can be disciplined. And then when he falls into the crime, they'll say to you, when, they, when he falls into the crime, they'll give him a sentence. Juvenile, they put in him. If he's actually old, over the age. Sharia doesn't work like that. The Sharia, from its wisdom, and its justice is, it looks at what is going to lead to it and it places a ruling on it as well. It won't allow you to look at that which is haram and then say to you, don't, don't commit zina. So that's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentions first, he mentions first low in the gaze. يَغُضُّوا مِنْ أَبَصَارِهِمْ وَيَحْفَظُوا فُرُوجَهُمْ And what's amazing is that the men were mentioned first before the women because the issue of lowering the gaze is an issue the men surpass the women in. It's the men that look. It's the men that don't understand and do not take serious the concept of lowering the gaze. وَيَحْفَظُوا فُرُوجَهُمْ Then that Allah commands them to safeguard and to protect uh, their private parts. ذَلِكَ أَزْكَى لَهُمْ Allah says that is most purest for you. Purest from what? أَمْرَاض آفَات Illnesses. Allah has already told us if you want to be pure and be protected this is what's going to protect you. Protect your private parts. First of all, don't look at what, what's made haram from you. And then, protect your private parts. Inna Allah khabirun bima yasna'oon. Allah is then, if a believer has iman in his heart, this will scare him. That part of the ayah alone will scare you. Inna Allah khabirun. Allah is saying, I am one who has great knowledge. In what? Bima yasna'oon, that which you're doing. You might have hid yourself in the dark room. And got away from everybody else. 
Talk to yourself, no one can see you. But inna Allah khabirun bima yasna'oon. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is khabir. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is one whose knowledge is vast. He knows bima yasna'oon that which you're doing. When you're walking on the street and you quickly gaze at a woman and you don't take your eye back, you don't take your look back, but you still carry on looking at her and you think no one can see you. Inna Allah khabirun bima yasna'oon. Allah tabarak wa ta'ala is one who knows and has vast knowledge of that action which you have done. Then Allah speaks to the women and he says, وَقُلْ لِلْمُؤْمِنَاتِ يَغْضُضْنَ مِنْ أَبْصَارِهِنَّ وَيَحْفَظْنَ فُرُوجَهُنَّ وَلَا يُبْدِينَ زِينَتَهُنَّ إِلَّا مَا ظَهَرَ مِنْهَا Allah doesn't just speak to the women like he spoke to the men. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. The reason is, the reason is, Allah says to the believing women, يَغْضُضْنَ مِنْ أَبْصَارِهِنَّ لَوَ your gay sisters. Stop looking at things that you're not allowed to look at. It is sad and it hurts to know that women who are married, some of them are doing it. They're not lowering their gaze. Sisters, lower your gaze. Don't belittle the concept of looking. Put your head down and don't look at a man that's not lawful for you. Don't look at him. And safeguard your private parts. Then Allah goes into speaking with the women further. Why? وَلَا يُبْدِينَ زِينَتَهُنَّ Sisters, Allah says to you, do not bring your beauty out. Do not bring your beauty out. Do not bring what is in out. Because this is what causes fitan wa fasadun arib. It's what causes trials and tribulations. It's what causes problems. So Allah tabarak wa ta'ala spoke to the women in that ayah in more details. Lowering the gaze has many, many benefits. Lowering the gaze, wallahi, Ibn al-Qayyim, rahimahullah, in his noble book, Bada'i al-Fawa'id, and also in his book, Adda' wa dawa which is also referred to al jawab al-Kafi, liman sa'ala an al-Dawa'i al-Shafi. Ibn al-Qayyim mentions in those two books of his, benefits that it has lowering the gaze. And from the things he mentions is, halawatul iman, the beauty and the joy of iman, to be in your heart, and to have it in your heart, you gain it through what? Lowering your gaze and not looking at that which Allah has prohibited from you, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Halawatul iman, the sweetness of iman, which each and every one of us is looking for. Do you know how to gain it? Lower your gaze. The sixth characteristics, al-khaslatul sadisa, the sixth thing that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa commanded us, which is what? Wa kufu aydiyakum. The fifth, which is the last one, is hold back from harming the creations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't transgress on the people. Don't transgress and exceed your limits towards the people. The person who does should remember the severity. And if not anything else, the fact that they are not guaranteed Jannah, that's, that alone is something to be scared of. You are not going to be from those people. The messenger is promising Jannah. Well, there's a hadith. And Imam Muslim narrated it. On the authority of Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu. This hadith goes as follows. Abu Huraira he said that the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said. And you find this hadith in Sahih Muslim. Marra rajulun. Marra rajulun. A man went by. A man. Whilst he was walking. Along a path. He came by a what? Bighusni shajaratin. He came by a branch of a tree lying there. Ala dhahri. فَقَالَ وَاللَّهِ This man said, he says, By Allah, وَاللَّهِ لَأُنَحِيَنَّ وَاللَّهِ لَأُنَحِيَ هَذَا عَنِ الْمُسْلِمِينَ By Allah, I shall remove this from the path so it doesn't harm the believers. فَأُدْخِلَ الْجَنَّةِ And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, and because of that alone, he was admitted into Jannah. Allah gave him Jannah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So these six characteristics are what our messenger told us alayhi salatu wasalam. That if a person comes with these six characteristics, that Jannah will be promised for him. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he truly makes us from those who fulfill those six characteristics so he can admit us into paradise. Anything which I have said that was wrong is from me as shaytan and Allah and his messenger are free from it. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik. أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أستغفرك وأتوب إليه